Brief History and Background of the Shard The idea for the Shard came about through the property entrepreneur Irvine Seller, who wanted to demolish Southwark Towers, the property he had acquired next to London Bridge Station, with a mixed-use skyscraper that would open in time for the London Olympics in 2012. Location and Significance of the Shard in London Nestled in a tight area between Guy's Hospital and London Bridge Station, close to the south bank of the Thames, construction of the building would bring significant challenges. The project had to be innovative, and it had to leave a legacy. The Shard was to be central to the redevelopment of the local area, known as London Bridge Quarter. Design and Concept The architect and design team behind the Shard. The Shard was designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano, in partnership with structural engineers WSP. Piano was previously best known as co-architect of the Pompidou Center in Paris and had a reputation as an incredibly innovative architect. Design concept of the Shard Piano sketched his initial design on a restaurant napkin and has said that he was inspired by railway lines, the River Thames, and the 18th century artist Canaletto's paintings of London, full of boats, tall masted ships, and church spires. So the shard can be seen as a giant mast or monumental spire, but its name actually came from a disparaging comment from English Heritage, who said the building would be a shard of glass through the heart of historic London. Key features of the building design. Some of the shard's most distinctive features include the exterior of 11,000 angled glass panels that reflect sunlight, giving the building almost a transparent, color-changing quality. A tapered design, lending itself to mixed use with hospitality and residential occupation in the upper levels and office space below. Alternating levels of concrete and steel. Construction. The building process and timeline. One of the biggest challenges facing contractors was the impact of demolition of the existing building on the site. Extensive surveys established the degree to which movement would affect surrounding buildings. Plus, it did not help that the foundations of Southwark Towers could not be reused. Early in the demolition phase, the project also hit financial trouble until funding was secured. A consortium of Qatari investors contributed 150 mailers for an 80% stake in the ownership of the Shard. Here is a brief timeline of the build. Spring 2008, early 2009, demolition of Southwark Towers. March 2009, Construction of concrete core begins. December 2011, upper spire completed. March 2012, topping out. July 2012, building inaugurated. Key construction challenges and how they were overcome. Perhaps the most innovative aspect of the way the shard was built was the top-down construction, which enabled first 23 stories to be built before the basement had been fully excavated. This saved considerable time. It was made possible by sinking concrete piles underneath the core of the building to support it. Casting the basement slab required the UK's largest ever continuous pour of concrete, 700 truckloads covering a total area of 5,500 mil 3. Quite a job for the concrete finishers. Crane operators also reached record heights. There was one thing taller than the tallest building in the UK, and that was the crane. In another innovative process, to complete the top section of the spire, the tower crane was cantilevered from the building's concrete core itself, another first for the UK. Materials and techniques used in the construction. Because of the different demands placed on the structure through its mixed use, a combination of steel and concrete were used at different levels. The first 40 stories are in a steel frame, then post-tensioned concrete up to level 72 and steel again to the 95th floor. The middle section also has a concrete mass to give the building rigidity and control its sway in the wind. Steel erectors and steel fixers played key roles during this phase of construction. Features and facilities. The Shard was conceived as a vertical city, and in practical terms, this is reflected in the way its elements are structured, with more floor area at its bottom. The lower levels are dedicated to office space. Restaurants and bars occupy three middle floors. The Shangri-La Hotel on levels 3452 offers world-class luxury accommodation with breathtaking views. 
topped by some of the most exclusive residential apartments in the world. Add to that shops, a spa, and the 360-degree viewing gallery, and you have the architect Renzo Piano's vision realized. Significance of the Shard as a modern marvel of engineering and construction. There is no doubt that the Shard is a modern architectural masterpiece. It has won numerous awards for its innovative engineering solutions and cutting-edge technology. While it caused controversy during its planning stages, as any bold, tall building will do, few would disagree that it enhances the London skyline. Anyone who worked on the project, and at one time as many as 1,450 people did, will remember the experience, from welding fabricators to form workers, as unlike anything they have done before or may do again.